Hello everybody, I am back. This is Bananas and it's party time excellent. This time, my special guest is a very unique person. He is a musician, he is part of a record label, and he's a manager. So many things in one. Please welcome Thomas Kaiser, part of Napalm Records, Rukar Management, and the drummer of Visions of Atlantis. Enjoy! Party time, excellent! <laughs> Hello everybody, I am back and I know lately I've been doing a lot of this, but this person is very special and I'm nervous because he is technically my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Hello Thomas, how are you? Hey Lena, how are you? Hi, <laughs> it's darkness over there. Yes, it's already it's... dark. It's almost 9 p.m. at night here, so... Oh my God, thank you so much for doing this outside the business uh, uh, hours of the office. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. You know, I, I came up with this idea during the quarantine because I feel so far from everybody. And I just wanted to talk to people about music, about life, about art, about everything possible. It's a great idea. It's I, li I like these things. <laughs> Fans thank like you, it you, and people you. are, all, even industry people like it to get some insight finally and not just be 24 seven <laughs> and working I and know, I playing know. shows. Sometimes, I know, sometimes you're like, oh, I'm over it. I don't want to deal with social media anymore. But I feel like this is so cool because first of all, it gives me energy because I get to see you guys and I get to talk to you guys. Uh, and second, uh, second of all, we record this for fans. And today's episode is gonna be very special because we can talk about things behind the scene that people don't realize mm -hmm. or, or people don't think about, you know? Cause Thomas here is a multitasker. He is doing so, so much. I don't know, is it because of your last name? Can you pronounce your last name for everybody? Well, in, in German it's Kaza and in, in most English people say Kaiser. Yeah, so we all know that that king, that ruler over there, he was multitasking. Caesar, yeah, well, no one said it. it's, 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 it's not Caesar. so much linked to Caesar, but people <laughs> tell, people say that too. <laughs> Caesar. Yeah, well, I like to say that because you are a good example of um, uh, people that can uh, be successful in so many things. Although the things that you do are all connected to music, to one business, but I felt it a little bit with Infected Rain. It's not easy to be manager and, you know, director of, and, uh, you know, like secretary, uh, r responsible for all the things, you know, like, uh, and besides all that, you're also a musician. So you know the things from inside and out from all the perspectives. So that's why I think this is gonna be super, super interesting. I have a few questions, but I this is gonna be a conversation, not an interview. And I think, um, you know, let me know if I'm going too, uh, too deep. And those are, <laughs> that, that is information not for everybody. Let me know. <laughs> well, I right? have nothing to hide, basically. <laughs> so good, I'm, good, good. I'm, I'm good. Just shoot the questions. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm always happy to share information with people. Good, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you know, this uh, new season on my YouTube channel is called Party mm. Time Excellent. And uh, I like to start my videos by asking my guests, what is your to-go guilty pleasure? What is party time mean to you? Or what is party time? Like, you know, some somebody needs a coffee and they're like, party's on, you know? Coffee's good enough. Or somebody needs a drink or just the weekend or a specific person to feel comfortable with and party. What is your party idea? Oh, it's so many, you know? That's that's the, that's the tricky question, you know? I, I mean, basically <laughs> it's summertime and right now, you know, everyone would be celebrating, you know, live music and I, this is the the biggest party potential for me always you know to be mm -hmm. either around bands that you know I work with or ideally you know my own band you know just coming off stage having a having had a great show and you know just get the adrenaline and the party started right away <laughs> so this yeah. is so 
you know, I'm I'm not so much partying with coffee. You know, we like to get some you know some drinks going, and this is you know especially in the summertime. It's you know this is yeah, one yeah, thing I, I dearly it. miss from you know from all this quarantine stuff. So this is yeah, this is what we do, and we never or we rarely ce celebrate to rock and metal music. You know, we're more the European dance musics when the celebration <laughs> is coming. Yeah, <laughs> I have to admit oh, that. <laughs> Yeah, you have to admit that not everybody knows that some musicians do need a break, a break from heavier music or heavier environments like, you know, loud environments. Mm. Uh, but nice to know, you know, that's a good answer. So your party time is summer, basically. It's, it's, yeah. It's and summer. everything that yeah. comes with summer. It's, I mean, it, <laughs> it's all year round, of course, but it's, you know, right now it's summertime. It's always, it brings back the biggest, the best memories from you know, even last year, the festivals that I yeah. attended and it was, it's always a blast because everyone's happy, you know, it's music, it's summer, it's, yeah, um, yeah, we very miss true. it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, very much, very much. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I like, uh, I, I like to see the bright part of every situation and I'm trying my best to always stay positive and take this big break, so-called break mm -hmm. as you know, something that we all needed, that the nature needed, musician needed to just sit down and write more or, or you know, be more productive with their thing. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, I'm over it. Let's go on the stage. Let's go on tour. Let's do it. <laughs> it's It's been far too long. Yeah. But I agree. It's, yeah. a, you know, it's a time where, you know, people can go back, discover themselves, you know, especially artists, be creative, you know, go yeah. different paths, write more music. And it's going to be a... I think a two, three year streak of great albums and great music from now on. Oh, yeah, I think so, too. I think so, too. Uh, talking about touring, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, I can't say I'm, I'm, I'm a, the best stalker of your band, but correct me if I'm wrong. Were you guys on tour and you had to stop and go back when this all happened? with exactly. uh, visions yeah. of atlantis mm -hmm. can you yeah. tell us more about it because there are bands that were in much more difficult situations than we were just by you know uh rescheduling certain mm -hmm. things you guys were in the middle of it how was it well it was we were on tour with dragon force and unleash the archers in north america and it five shows into the tour you know i mean we i flew there and i noticed or we knew that something was going on already in in europe and in the world because the, the planes were fairly empty it was i think one third of the okay. seats were you know booked and there, mm -hmm. there was no rush at the airport but you know we didn't we i, I personally i don't really pay attention too much to the news because it's always bad news and you know i try yeah, to same. avoid all the bad news as much as i can to be happy bright motivated and yeah. when we came to the s nothing nothing was a problem you know we played the first shows every, everything was fine and then into the fourth show you know all of so all of a sudden people were you know we didn't shake hands with anybody you know everyone was a little bit more distant even on yeah. the musician's side you know between the bands um yeah. and then on the on the day before the last show which we had in denver and we didn't know it was the last show um you know my singer michele he came to me and said like well uh, they're considering this new virus to be a pandemic you know in europe at least they're giving you know they're talking about this being a pandemic so then the first information dropped from you know chicago that they're thinking of canceling the shows you know but that was like one or two weeks away and then yeah. we we hit minneapolis uh saint paul and on that day um, the tour manager informed us that it's going to be the last day it's going to be the last show oh my god so we had to do everything you know we i mean not just us but it was all the bands you know all the merchandise all the flights all the travel you know the buses we had three buses every every band had to, you know had to pay a huge amount of money to even get on this tour and you know how you know how much investment needs to be done for a band from europe oh, yeah. to go to the us so we said, okay, um, let's make the best out of it. Let's play this one last show. And at, like two hours later, they said, no, we, we have to cancel the, the governor from Minnesota just announced that they have to, you know, cancel all the shows and this tour ends right now. So here we are, you know, oh the God. bus was leaving. I have goosebumps um, right now, honestly. Yeah, we had to, you know, get a hotel. And the, the problem was that 
there was a festival, uh, Hell, Hell and Heaven or Heaven and Hell. And, no, it was Hell and Heaven in Mexico, you know, a big festival mm -hmm. that we were supposed to fly to and then, you know, miss two shows of the US tour and then go back after the, the festival in Mexico and finish the tour. So we had flights from, um, you know, from the next day, I, I don't remember which where we were supposed to play and fly out to Mexico and then fly back to the tour from Mexico and then finish the tour and fly back home from Canada. So we had to buy new flights from Minneapolis to Mexico. And then we, because they said the Canadian shows uh, that we had booked were still on because it was Canada. So we were mm -hmm. going to wait five days or six days in Canada to play the shows and then fly home because we had tickets. So we went yeah. to Mexico, everything in Mexico, everything was fine. You know, we were, um, we were happy to play there. The crowd was amazing, but our family and friends from Austria and even, you know, the travel agent, they already called us and said, okay, don't go to Mexico, please go home because it's going to be a mess from next week on. And I remember yeah. it was, a, I think it was Saturday and the Austrian chancellor, um, he announced that everything's going to be closed by Monday. So he urged oh, wow. everyone home, but nevertheless, we played all this. We played the, the last show, the festival in Mexico. And, um, but on Sunday at breakfast, you know, we talked about it and we said, we can't go back to Canada. We, we have to buy yet another new set of flights, you know, for us, for the crew, mm -hmm. um, straight from Mexico city to home. And it was basically, it was one of the last flights that arrived from, you know, from this, from North America to, um, to wow. Austria. And there were so many people that, you know, they had flight connections through the U S and it was offered to us as well from Mexico to the U S and then home. But on the next day there was, you can't imagine it looked like a football stadium of people just in the, in the small or in the, in the airport area, because there were so many people stuck because they can't, you know, do the, the travel via the, the United States. So we yeah. were lucky that we flew through Paris and not the new United States. It was, it was a mess. Yeah. And it was only until I was home that I realized that the situation was really, um, serious. serious. Yeah. Because I came yeah. home and everything was locked down. Everything was closed and <laughs> I couldn't yeah. even go to work. You know, we, we closed the office and we had to take, you know, uh, there was no kindergarten, nothing, you know, it was just, mm -hmm. It was just a strange situation that uh, because if you're on tour, you know, you have your own cycle and your own um, daily routine, routine and it's a completely yeah. um, it's completely distracted um, from the outside world. You know, it's remote. Basically, you have your own world that you live in. Yeah. And that's what happened to us. It struck us only when we, you know, when we got back home. <laughs> but. Yeah and we lost so much money that it was it was ridiculous but thankfully yeah. we had we had a uh, huge support from our fans you know we sold yeah all the... i saw that you guys you guys did a, found, a crowdfunding it, and, it was uh, impossible you know even with that crowdfunding yeah. i think it was twenty thousand dollars we still lost another 15 or 20 on everything but it's yes yes uh it, it is it is crazy amount of money and this number is um i don't think people realize how expensive this uh tours and everything that comes with the tours can be you know i've been uh, i had as a guest uh cj from the artist murder mm -hmm. and they were on tour as well they mm -hmm. lost a lot of money they had to go back to australia uh, like literally after three i think three shows yeah. as well it was a very very big um tour mm. and um there are other bands just like you and i feel for you guys i you know, we all are losing a lot of income. We all are losing a lot of excitement and plans and everything. But when it comes to budgets and money, it's 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 a loss that not only the band take is taking upon it, but everybody who's involved, you know, exactly. because behind yeah. every band, there's a manager, a booking agency, a label, and everybody suffers and, and not very often, you know, like not, not everybody understands that even by supporting a little bit and spreading the word or buying an extra t-shirt exactly. right yeah. now, especially everything they can counts. make yeah. a difference. Yeah. I mean, even the, the bus company, we, you know, we had to send back the bus, you know, the driver was counting on, you know, four weeks of work at least because we had three more or two more tours scheduled for the U S this year. Yeah. Um, so it would be for him, it would be 12 weeks of work and 12 weeks of, or 13 weeks of renting the, the bus and 
the yeah, bus company yeah. told me, okay, but you get, you have to be patient with the refunds because we have like 50 buses yeah. coming back from, from, yeah. from all tours. So it's definitely for a whole industry, it's devastating, you know, everything around it, you know, stage technicians, yeah. you know, rental companies, yeah, it's uh, crew members and yeah. everybody. Yeah. So it's not just I, the musicians, I, it's everyone, you know, that absolutely, you know, uh, thanks to the era this happened we are able to uh, communicate and we are able to stay in touch yeah. and help each other you know i'm very thankful for the guys that created the um founding for for the nomads mm. and i was actually also part of it just to help uh crew members around the world uh and just you know like with other donations and actions like that i was able to help my own band as well a little bit by you know yeah. i created some artwork and that that fans were supporting and and you know that helped a little bit but that's you know that is just t so temporary but at the same time imagine having this situation in the 80s or in oh, the yeah. 90s where internet was not even you know a thing mm we would have been really really fucked <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah but uh um, i think it's you know it's so special that you know people are supportive you know the fans are supportive of every band you know if there's and no one you know no one's greedy about that you know everyone is just yeah. being honest and it's just i think it brings everyone a little bit closer together, back together yeah. and that's that's a good thing you know that's a good part about it. I agree with you. Uh, you know, uh, probably in normal times with the normal um, busyness, mm. I wouldn't even be able to do this with everybody that was part of, you know, um, my videos like before. And for both reasons, my me being always on the road and busy and them being all, always busy, you know. Uh, but I think, I think, you know, we should just uh, try our best to... Uh, learn from it and work hard and you know I try my best to uh, take this time and be closer to um, infected rains fans and supporters mm. as much as I can because um, you know thanks to people that believe in you you can be where you are especially when it comes to art yeah I agree you know, about that any yeah. kind and of it's, art. it gives yeah. you so much more back than you know just purely you know, income, um, or, you know, it's it, like I said, it brings you closer to the, to the fans and to what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, that being said, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I was wondering what were you guys doing? Um, and you know, I think that people have to like hear the backstories, mm -hmm. um, and the things that are like, you know, not really like always, um, public, yeah. um, saying that, you know, like I, I have a question that is, uh, very often asked to me in interviews and I I was thinking that this is a very good question to ask to you directly and I think a lot of people are going I gonna be curious to hear it from you you know uh, especially during the whole uh, 2019 and then including 2020 I had a lot of interviews because we just signed with a label mm -hmm. after 10 years of being independent and you know the majority of people were wondering why we decided to finally sign and why with you so i don't know if you ever watch any of my interviews if you're anywhere curious to see what does she had to say you know but i always say one thing you know we had you know we were always very honest with you mm -hmm. and you know that we had other offers uh, all over the place and there were other people that wanted to manage us and like work with us but we decided to stick with you because of how stubborn you are. <laughs> no, actually, you were the you were the ones that always believed in us for so long, and you were the first record label that back in the days, long, 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 long time ago, uh, you know, came out with the first offer. So mm -hmm. now, you know, the majority of our fans and the majority of the press people. They were all afraid that Infected Rain is going to change after that. Mm. So mm -hmm. can you tell us your part of the story? So why did you stick around for so long and wanted us so badly? Well, you know, it's very simple because I, I really, you know, I believe what you do. I believe in what you do and I, I see the potential. And I don't think that, um, uh, you know, when I really believe in something, you know, it's the same thing with everything I do. If I really believe in something, it's hard to let go. And then, you know, I... 
I see it and I see it in my head and I see it developing. Um, and I, I, when I see what needs to be done to, you know, because I, I know the struggle of doing everything yourself, you know, at some point you just need a bigger organization, a bigger team with experts that help you, you know, develop and help you to be, not to try to modify you, but to try just to be a, you know, a ladder or a, an escalator that brings you to the next level. And I saw that and, you know, I, I, I was sure that we were the right company for, for you guys and that, you know, my my way of, you know, even managing bands is to give them the freedom they need. You know, they only need the network and, you know, if bands need more help, then, you know, they should ask for it. That's how I try to work and let everyone do his own thing um, and just be there for guidance. But basically it's, you know, I, I was so stubborn and I'm always so stubborn when I, I see that potential and uh, I really wanted to make it happen. And I'm so happy that it finally worked out after you know, you were not the longest, uh, you know, I, there were bands that I tried for a longer time. So I'm, I'm, I was, I was, I'm always, um, patient when it comes to that, although I'm stubborn yeah, and, no, uh, <laughs> you know, probably and it just needs time, your, you know, because everyone yeah. can say, Hey, I'm really interested. You know, when the band is successful, mm -hmm. a band is rising, then it's always easy to go there and, you know, mm -hmm. say big words and everything. But, you know, I try to be as reasonable as possible. And I think that this is something that. Uh, since I am on a musician side as well, I don't want to hear people, you know, telling me the whole old story. You know, when it's successful, they tell you what you want to hear, and then you know they're just starting to yeah. be honest when it decreases. You know, then it's then that's when yeah. people are get honest. But uh, I think it's you know if you see the potential, it's it's really there's no way I was gonna let this go, and I'm I'm really happy. Um, but it was always you know when i first saw and first got in touch with the band i, I always saw it that this is something really special and thank i you. tried thank to come across as us. you know not the the you know the, the the guy with too many words i tried to prove it then in the in the in the corporation that this was your the, the right choice for you or from mm -hmm. by you yeah you know it's it's funny because you know um just like Everybody else, when we had our very first EP, mm. obviously we sat down and we mailed so many like CDs, the EP, the little EP CDs that we did. Uh, we mailed it all over the world, you know. Mm. Some some uh, went uh, digitally, some went physical, and we had a few answers, uh, and and some just ignored us. Um, some started to contact us later on but i am saying all this only for one reason i also had as a guest um andrea from lacuna coil mm -hmm. um and he told me this story obviously lacuna coil started way back in the days when uh, there was no internet, uh, uh, bands could go big only mm. thanks to radio stations and stuff like that. So he told me the story of how they had two songs only and they send their, you know, uh, rec record, that, you know, to listen to different record labels and they had a feedback right away. Mm. So basically, I'm telling you these two stories I'm curious how much you know and how much you can tell us about the evolution because certain things started working way worse for the bands, especially for beginner mm. bands, and certain things work way better for beginner bands, especially nowadays. So this transition, you as a musician and you as as a record label, what can you tell us about it? Like, what do you think? Back, you know, back in the days, mm. even contracts have had huge numbers, even, you know, like, I don't know, the investment of a label was more diff it's on a different level, mm. but it's understandable why these things change be with the, with the, um, with the internet and, and everything being digital and free, literally, like if you really, really want and try super mm. hard, you can have stuff for free, you yeah. know? So you know, obviously this affected huge companies like record labels, you know, mm. they are losing money just like the bands lose money. So uh, can you tell us your point of view and your part of this story, you know, because because it's so different for mm. you know, older bands, older musicians, yeah. newer bands yeah. with newer musicians and how we got it, how Lacuna Coil or other bands like us got this, you know, going on. Well, I, you know, personally, I started out as a musician in it's 20 years ago. So, um, mm -hmm. 
um, I was or I, I was a little later than Lacuna Coil, but basically, you know, we did the same thing. We had to rent a studio for to get three songs done, and it was crazily yeah. expensive. You know, I think yeah. if you convert it to euros, it will be it would be you know three and a half thousand euros. That's something you know, if you have proper yeah. home recording and everything, you can produce an album with that. Yet we had yeah. a, a shitty demo, and I had to you know mail. Yeah. Um, back in the days, there were so many record labels out there. Still, you know, I think Germany, 10, 15 record labels that released uh, metal music, you know, and yeah. it was not, uh, it was not easy to get, uh, to get the right person. You had to get them on the phone, you know, you had to send out big parcels with, you know, printed bios with a CD yeah. that had the cover artwork already and the photos and everything. It was a lot of work, whereas right now, you know, it's just basically sending out digital tracks and emails. So uh, I think um, the, the only thing I, I have to disagree with you is that the numbers, you know, when I started in the business as a musician at, 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 at the label, the numbers were already very realistic. I think mm -hmm. that right now it's, you know, with the digital push from streaming, even though, you know, the one stream doesn't pay a lot of money but you know if it gets you know multiply it and you 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 know big artists or bigger artists even in the middle world you can make so much more money in the long run from the catalog than you know just by pressing cds and selling back catalog you know it's a it's a mm -hmm. it's a tricky situation but i think you know even yeah. back then the money was not um was not more i think the labels earned more and now it's switched a little more to the you know, to the artists, uh, it's okay. up to a certain extent, mm -hmm. because um, the deals, I think, are fair now or more fair now than they were, at least from my experience mm -hmm. as a when I first entered the world as a musician from the first deals mm -hmm. I got. Um, and it was so much more work to get in touch with people. And mm -hmm. um, it was so much more difficult to um, to you know start a career because you know the tours were so expensive you had to um you had to buy you know magazines back then printed magazines were oh, still yeah. a number and you know the advertisements even though the, the magazines got in, smaller yeah. the prices were yeah. st the, the prices are still big and they were big back then so yeah. it was it was still tricky for a label and a, a band to start and to get the right support um if i had the same thing for my band you know i'm talking about my band now than we had now you know it's so much easier to get in touch with the fans directly you know if you have if yeah. you're you know your band is touching people then you know all of a sudden you have all these followers that you can directly yeah. talk to whereas back in the day or 20 years ago um they had to buy magazines you know they had to go to the shows to discover you know they you could see people still you know taking home flyers <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> from yeah. shows so um on one hand you know i'm i'm happy to be you know to have having started out back then because it was so much you know there was the, the thing back then it was so much you know you had to do step by step and it it should work and now in the digital times everything has to happen now you know the new bands they don't give themselves enough time to develop because like i said yeah. producing music is easy and cheap um compared to you know you had to book a studio i had to go to find yeah. a studio in austria that can you know can even record properly metal music you know and that it sounds something yeah. like and the bands i listen to you know that uh, was more expensive and it was so expensive and it was yeah. uh, like i said right now you can you can you, you're in las vegas and you can record your music and send it digitally yeah. to uh, yep. to your bandmates and then you have, you have a, a record sounding like it's it's been done in the fancy studios, <laughs> you know what true. I mean? So true. So I, I'm happy that, uh, you know, I could live and even my, my working career through all the, these years and see the development. And the thing that we always mm -hmm. did was to take out, you know, never neglect what the, you know, the traditional way was, but also adding it, you know, with the new way. And I think this is why, yeah. this is what bands need to do now, you know, young bands, they need to first not think about the million streams on Spotify, but think about how can I develop a story, you know, how, how can I 
really be someone that makes a difference from all that that basic noise that's out there how can i stick yeah. out you know and then you know you're interested there are so many talented uh musicians and bands and nowadays that mm. you know you don't have to try to be better but you have to be just you know have something to say because if you don't have anything to say then you know yes you can have all the followers mm. and yes you can be unique in uh looking or unique dancing but that's gonna end so fast yeah you know you have to think um, of a message and you have to stick to that you have to present a concept and i think that's that because you know i get a lot of uh, you know solicitations a lot of demos or albums that i know, was just to about to ask yeah. you you're in my <laughs> head i was just about to ask you how much do you actually pay attention or give a listen to the demos that come across you nowadays because it's probably thousands mm -hmm. it, it's it's a lot uh but the, the good thing right now it's just clicking the link you know pe because you you don't you don't get the cds anymore you know where yeah. you actually have to put it in and listen to it and <laughs> So it's just yeah. a matter of, you know, checking your the submissions online and that's something I really appreciate. I listen to everything I get and I spread it to my team if I can't listen it personally. Um, and they listen to everything because, you know, it's sometimes it's just we have discovered so many bands by just, you know, listening to demos and to yeah. seeing what young bands are doing. And uh, I think it would be a little too you know stuck up to say okay you know we we don't need to listen to new bands anymore you know we will discover them by ourselves but it's just it's it's not true you have it's to be like always yeah. humble and listen to all the new musicians because they deserve it i was in the same situation and i well, hated it you know because I, yeah. everyone spends so much time and effort and then you know people just skipping through or just um not paying attention to what you do is mm -hmm. it's a matter of respect too so absolutely it's a, it's a lot it's, and but you know we have people that uh, i'm not just doing it on my own it's people that listen to it and i always try to get an opinion if something's interesting and then you know we i can't respond to all of them and we can't respond yes, to course. everything because yeah. sometimes you but know if you I'm if you're sure talking you... about art you know they want to discuss why 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 do you don't like yeah. it <laughs> yeah. they take they ask people questions but that's impossible <laughs> People of art are very uh, sensitive people, so yeah. you can't really go into... Uh, you know, the funny thing is, um, I'm sure I'm not the only musician. If there are musicians watching this video, uh, a lot of musicians that are not even record labels or managers, they also get you know either younger uh bands or newer bands or even already like bands that are established in a way sending and being like your opinion matters so much mm. to me and honestly i honestly listen to all of it but i can't answer yeah it's... and it's just <laughs> difficult and that is one of the reason that is one of the reason i can i can only imagine the pressure you guys have because you get way more you know and i'm sure a lot of it, it deserves a lot of attention and it's interesting but it's just you know sometimes it's not it's not your genre and you don't even feel mm. qualified to even have a proper opinion on it or sometimes it's like you understand that they what they wanted to say but they didn't do mm. a good um like a proper quality record and you're like you guys have to invest in a quality you know it's important because the song so could sound better you mm. know but you can't say that because people of art in general are very very sensitive people and i am guilty of being one as well and that's why I first of all show every idea only to people that already know me very well, which are my musicians from Infected Rain. And only after getting an opinion from them, I am more like, okay, I can, you know, like I, I feel um, easier on sharing that with the world. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like that. You know, it's uh, yeah. you have a certain uh, bunch of people that you trust and you valid your opinion, and I think that is mm -hmm. that's enough and sufficient. Um, yeah. it's just, you know, sometimes you just, uh, it's just an opinion, you know, and we always need to decide, is it, you know, can we work with that? You know, is that something yeah. that it's going to develop into something that, you know, makes a, a career and, you know, yeah. it's worth to present to a bigger audience. You know, a lot of people also, um, 
uh, come to the point where they say that you know music industry has became just a business and it's all about money 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 and you know I think that one cannot survive without the other because those are strategies that you have to know or you have to go through what is your opinion again because you are behind the scene and on the stage mm. as well what is your opinion about that does the music industry really became only business 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 or is, is there more to it i mean it's uh, of course it's a business you know because the bands you know they're not going to give you uh, you're not going to play a show for free just to entertain people you know you have to maintain a a living and that's that's why it's a business and people need to pay for music that's why you know that's where the com money comes from um, sometimes it is just about the money but it's not just from the business but it's from the bands too you know um, mm -hmm. and that's something that you know where you have to find a, a middle way you know it's it's art it needs yeah. to be respected uh, it's not something that you know we take lightly and it's not whatever we release or to try to work with we think that it's good enough to be you know taken care of um so the product needs to be right but in the end you know it's it's it is a business it's a fun business because you get to work with people and artists it's it's exciting um but yet it needs to create economic economic value for everyone you know but so it's absolutely, difficult you know absolutely. it's i would uh, i would lie if you know we we don't want to sell you know we we want to no, sell no, no, we want no, no. to make so, money so, but uh, we want to make money also for the bands and we, everyone yeah, involved absolutely so, it was just very important for me to ask you this because yeah. i get i get I this question it. a lot of times and some i I, I, mm -hmm. I see it because some people you know that's why I'm, I'm i think differently because i see both sides you know i just don't see the business side solely because i understand the artist too because i experienced all this you know like yeah and um, you know we're promoting shows too, so I see oh, that yeah, too. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. It's a job. It's a it's the it's still it's the dream job. You it know is, what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's a very hard job. It's probably one of the hardest jobs on the planet. If it's you think uncertain, about that you know, you're always yeah. uncertain because I mean, one, yeah. you as a band, what if you if you lack of you know. Um, new songs that are not good or you you lose the inspiration you know what are you going to do then yeah. you know that's the only source yeah, of absolutely of you know your product value comes from is how good your albums yeah. are how good your music is and you put a lot of effort in it you know and then you have yeah. you have to wait and see if people appreciate it and only done then you know everything yeah. comes but uh, it's it's a business you know it needs to be taken seriously because everyone wants to make a living of it you know it's not about getting greedy and rich I would say yeah, it's just and, about, and, it, and it's not you know, only about the you know the people that are on the stage. It's mm. about the crew members that help those people Everyone, look good you know. on the stage. You know the people that booked that stage, the people that promoted that stage. Everyone, the album, the sound engineers, the producers, and it's so many people. Mm. And when sometimes people are like, "Oh, you sell so much. You're good. You're mm. you're good." But and in, in the end of the day, nobody knows that by selling one album, the band has like I don't know. I don't know what should we say it properly by selling one album online, which is what ten dollars for the album. Let's say digitally? it's fifteen euros or fifteen dollars. I mean, let's be digitally. If you do, digitally. If, if you do sell it directly, it's between fifteen and sixteen euros. Yeah. So how much does a band really get in in the end? Twenty five percent, twenty percent, fifteen percent, thirty percent. It depends of your contract. We're not gonna talk yeah. about numbers here, but people have to understand that everything else mm. goes to. Uh, you know, 5% goes to a manager, another 5% goes to a booking agent, another 5% there and there and there. And by the end of the day, everybody's happy mm. because everybody has their own part in it and every work has to be paid. Yeah, I was, I, was just, I was just really calculating curiously. Um, you know, yeah. that's why it's so, it's, so, it's so important that the bands, you know, understand the things how things work you know it's not just about the band yeah. making the music it's you know you have to no. pay people to promote your music you have to pay people to put them in the shops you have to pay people um to you know ship them so it's it's you have to pay the promote as a label you have to pay the promotion and the most artist. of the time it's just yeah. it's, the risk is on the label and yeah. uh, you know 
labels not pay advances for for this yeah. purpose and it's it's not as i mean i see fans and people ask me always about it um you know on the label side why don't you pay your artists more you know but uh, on the other side you know everyone has or a lot of people have streaming services installed and this is you know this is one of the reasons that you know everything is a little bit more difficult because the model yeah is so it's friendly for whoever owns the <laughs> the service but not for the people that supply it with content yeah 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 no i agree with you but i i, I have to uh tell you one thing and i kept this one information i first i thought i'm gonna tell you in per in person mm -hmm. but um i didn't know when we we're gonna see each other and then the, this happened um in the beginning of this year i went for uh the um music convention now mm -hmm. uh for the first time and i had a lot of fun I've, i met a lot of fans and friends and musicians and uh, i had a few like work uh, propositions but the best part that happened to me was after i met a friend that i know forever that showed me around the, uh, los angeles a little bit because i never had the opportunity to really uh, visit it properly and in the end of the day before i left we entered a record store mm -hmm. and it it's a really big uh, record store that I, I go very often to record stores or like movie stores. I really like to uh, pay for my movies and mm. pay for my music myself. We're old school. And <laughs> very old school. Yeah, I have vinyls and, and stuff like that. So before we left, uh, I was just curious. Let's see if they have infected rain. It actually came from my friend. And we went and I, when I found Endorphin album, on the shelves of the store and i have tears in my eyes right now i was crying mm -hmm. i'll be honest with you i was so emotional just to have to experience this as a musician and just hold your your art oh. your, your baby <laughs> and be like oh my god i am in los angeles i come i was born in eastern europe and my band is here <laughs> everybody can buy oh. it everybody can see it give it a try I bought it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, you were the one. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so I wanted to tell you thank you. Thank, thank you, you for believing in us. And thank you for even, you know, just for that little moment that I had right there. And mm. then, and even now me being, having all these emotions by telling you, thank you for, you know, believing in us and, and sticking around no matter what. We were not, you know, in the beginning, we were... You know very skeptical and we had so many questions and still you were patient and and you still are thank you very much really thank, thank you. you it means that means a lot actually you know it's 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 so nice to hear and it's um very special that you tell me that thank you very much and it was of course you know this course. is but, I really you know it's, i get so person, used to this being that the the part of the job that just needs to be done that i you know you sometimes lose the not the value of something like that um but you it, it's it's a normal thing you know there's a record store in in, you know, in la one of the biggest it's, it was probably yeah. amoeba music or i hope it was yeah amoeba it was music. yeah it was because this yeah. is something i really we really pay attention to that because we know people go in there and they buy things and yeah. but it's 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 really heartwarming to hear that thank you Thank you, really. I, I didn't I didn't think I'm going to like uh, get so emotional by just remembering that I even filmed it. I, I mean, she, my friend, she filmed me buying it and I put it on my Instagram by saying, please guys, support bands just for this little moments like this, yeah. because because of you, I'm able to do this right now in mm. Los Angeles, you know? Cool. It's very and cool. Yes, of course. No, thank you very, very much. And you know what? I'm not going to keep you too long. I will uh, uh, ask you my last two questions that are classic questions for my episodes on bananas right here. I ask everybody these questions. I just don't want to keep you too long or it's else fine. I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, would you please tell me, uh, one of the question is, uh, a lot of musicians and or just people in the music industry, they get a lot of attention from the press and, mm. and just people in general. What is that one question that you're so tired of answering already? Like you're asked that question all mm. the time. Yeah. Everybody has that. I have 
a few of that and I'm tired of answering them. Do you have a question that you're like, again, really? <laughs> it, it, you know, the problem is there are so many questions like that. <laughs> but yeah. which is the, what's the question that I'm annoyed the most? You know, as, as a label, you know, I always get to the, the one question, what should you do to get signed? You know, I'm like, okay, yeah, it's like, it's like, um, there's so much to yeah, tell yeah. or it's not just um, one thing. well, that this is one of the most annoying questions. Yeah. What, what, what should okay. bands to I'm not, you know, I don't want to be rude. It's not annoying. I answer it, but it's like, yeah, um, there is no secret to it, but it, it's like, how, I remember, I try to remember as a, as a band what they ask, you know, like, how did you write your album? You know, this is something like, what do you mean? It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. there's so many questions from interviewers that are so uh, uninspired. You know what I mean? Sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course I do. <laughs> of course you do. But yeah. um... <laughs> no, but it, look, it really, I hope that the people that are going to watch this, they are going to understand that sometimes it's a struggle for us to answer the same questions over and over again, you know, it's and fine. Sometimes... You know, that. sorry for to interrupt you, but it's whenever I, I, you know, like we do now, you know, you're, you have, you know, this has depth, you know, this is interesting. This is just a pleasure to, to talk to you well, and you. to answer the questions. And sometimes it's just like you, you have people asking you questions. They wrote it down. They, they don't feel it, you know, they don't mean it. They, yeah. it seems just like they, they're not, not really have done their homework, you know, and then, exactly. you know, I'm not Google even it a little a, bit <laughs> or from the label side or artist side, I'm not willing to yeah. give them, you know, my, my insights, you know, what I mean is because it's, yeah. if you want an interview, if you want my time, um, then I, I appreciate your time, but then it needs to be a, an, an interesting time, you know, and it needs yeah. to be yeah, respectful. <laughs> And I don't mean to be, you know, rude or anything, but it's just like a matter of respect too. That's, absolutely, absolutely. Know. Okay, what, uh, then my last question is, I like to ask uh, my friends and artists, what is one topic or question that you actually wish people would ask more or would be more curious about certain aspect? Is there anything like that that you're like, man, I wish people were more curious about this instead of, you know, how much money I make or mm. how, what does uh, visions of Atlantis mean mm. or something, you know what I mean? Like, is there any topic like that that you wish people paid more attention and asked you more often um, or, or the artists or whatever, you know? Yeah, I just, you know, I, from a band or from a musician side, I, it, there's not a certain topic, but I just want, if someone comes in, I just want them to be prepared enough to know something about the, the band, you know, because mm -hmm. so tell me about your band, you know, that's one of the questions I forgot. So tell me about your band. It's like, yeah, yeah. Like, or okay. even sometimes, you know, it's because it's a very personal situation, especially in, 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 in personal interviews, you mm -hmm. know, face to face interviews, you know, a simple, how are you? And people forget about that, you know, it's yes, like, this should be true. part of something. Um, other than that, you know, there's maybe also because i don't really like to do interviews you know there's nothing you know i would rather uh, have my you know the spokesperson of the band like the singer um clementine yeah. and michaela <laughs> talk about everything <laughs> well you know what and i thought about interviewing her instead but then i said nope <laughs> we you like I have some questions for you. Yeah, but she, she's, she is interesting. You know, she's a really, really, really interesting musician, she person, artist. She's such a artist, sweetheart. So. She is. Yeah, absolutely. She definitely is. Remember meeting her in person, chatting a little bit when we played together at the festival last year in Czech Republic. I, if I'm being interviewed, you know, I'd rather much talk about maybe sports or something <laughs> right right of course of course okay. well okay thank you so 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 much for your time thank you for you know maybe even sharing some information that maybe you know it's a little bit um uh, 
too personal or too business-like. Thank you for, you know, trying to show people and to like just share with people uh, different aspects that maybe people just don't realize sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, thank you really a lot, a lot for this. And, you know, I hope to get back on the road soon and I hope for you guys to get back on the road soon as well and to just hang out some more and have more shows together, okay. you know, share yeah, the stage exactly. and stuff. Thank you so much for doing this, Lena. It's, I really thank appreciate you. not just for me personally, but the, the way you present everything and it's, you know, um, it's a pleasure to talk to you and to work with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>